For example, we had uh, a customer that, um, you know, basically purchased Air Slate, came to you guys and then came to us for implementation. They didn't have Salesforce. They really didn't have a CRM or anything else. So it was really a standalone solution. Mm -hmm. They did have Dropbox, um, but they were a hiring organization. And, you know, they were sending around 20 documents per applicant. Um, and to get somebody hired was, you know, <laughs> an act of God. Not only was there like 20 documents going around, but there was three or four people on their end that had to touch it and review it. And then there had to be some supporting documentation uploaded. So we basically uh, assisted them with bringing that process completely into a standalone version of AirSlate and, you know, probably eliminated. I think they quoted 20 or 25 hours of work per week. Yeah, great. So, um, Oh my has been around for over 21 years. It'll be 22 years next year. Um, and really we pride ourselves on delivering, you know, solutions and uh, service excellence in, uh, in the SaaS industry. Software is a service, basically. Um, you know, we like to be the go-to resource for emerging mid-sized companies, you know, so we really focus our services on the, the SMB market. For those emerging mid-sized, com uh, you know, companies are the ones that we really, you know, focus our services on um, and we deliver services in the Salesforce stack, the Dynamics 365 stack, obviously with AirSlate and uh, with another partner called Flowgear, which is an iPaaS uh, integration platform as a service. We do a lot of digital transformation services around that. We also have, you know, a couple of our own products in the marketing automation space. Um, you know, so basically we assist our partners and customers, you know, to basically grow and dominate their niche. Um, so I'm the, I'm the COO at OMI and I also head up the professional services practice, which includes, um, you know, those products I talked about, Salesforce, Dynamics 365, our AirSlate professional services and our Flowgear professional services. What were some of your goals or what are some of your goals for the OMI AirSlate relationship that we have? Yeah, so really, um, I mean, it was to grow both of our businesses, right? Um, you know, so we partnered with AirSlate to assist your customers, which, you know, sometimes they happen to be our customers as well because they're on Salesforce or Dynamics or sometimes, you know, some other system and they come to us. But basically to, you know, assist those customers with launching AirSlate or the Sign Now product, integrating it either uh, as a standalone into their custom applications or into Salesforce and Dynamics. Um, we also here at OMI utilize, you know, AirSlate. We've integrated that into our uh, Salesforce instance where we use it for master service agreements and uh, sales orders that come directly out of, out of Salesforce. Uh, how did you first learn about us and what was the relationship like and how did you sort of begin the process of partnering up? Yeah, so I think we kind of stumbled into this. Um, you know, right away figured out that there was there was a match um, and there was a gap that needed to be filled right on both parts. Um, you know, so AirSlate was growing. Its customer base had, um, you know, some investments coming in, uh, you know, was again, was growing um, and saw a lot of their customers, uh, you know, needing some assistance with, you know, implementing uh, slates or custom logic or custom integration, whether it be with Salesforce uh, or their platform or Dynamics. Um, so, you know, we kind of we kind of stumbled upon it. Um, I believe it was through one of our joint partnerships with uh, uh, with one of our channel partners, AppDirect or AppSmart. We had some joint customers that we were doing some things for and they needed some assistance and that kind of kicked off the conversation. And, you know, so we we came into it that way. And, and how long has it been? It's only been about eight months or so, I believe. Of why customers integrate AirSlate with Salesforce. And before we even do that, is it Salesforce and AirSlate, Salesforce and SignNow, and then is there any 365 as well? Are we talking just Salesforce for most cases? Um, it, it's really a, a good mix. I would say, um, you know, the majority, just because we focus on on Salesforce and Dynamics 365, we do have a lot of customers that we either introduce AirSlate to or, you know, they hear that we're Salesforce experts and we also can assist with AirSlate. So we're brought into it. Um, but, you know, we probably 
it's not really 50 50 but we do have a good amount of customers that we do some standalone solutions for and then we've done a handful of you know custom coding using the sign now apis to integrate into some existing applications that you know generate documents and require signatures and a little bit of workflow it's a good balance right now for us from customers that have come to you and they're not mm-hmm. doing any integration um, and they're just doing some standalone um, you know processes that they're moving into air slate or you know they're doing something a little bit more complicated uh, integrating it into salesforce you know mostly on the the sales side essentially what are the customers usually asking for what what problem are we are we trying to solve for example we had uh, a customer that um, you know, basically purchased AirSlate, came to you guys, and then came to us for implementation. They didn't have Salesforce. They really didn't have a CRM or anything else. So it was really a standalone solution. Mm-hmm. They did have Dropbox, um, but they were a hiring organization. And, you know, they were sending around 20 documents per applicant. Um, and to get somebody hired was, you know, <laughs> an act of God. Not only was there like 20 documents going around, but there was three or four people on their end that had to touch it and review it. And then there had to be some supporting documentation uploaded. So we basically uh, assisted them with bringing that process completely into a standalone version of AirSlate and, you know, probably eliminated. I think they quoted 20 or 25 hours of work per week. What are some common uh, needs that customers have when integrating Salesforce and AirSlate when they come to you. Yeah, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those needs from a Salesforce perspective are in the, you know, the the sales workflow. Um, you know, so it's either contract, contract negotiation. Um, you know, where there's either a straight contract that goes out, a straight contract that goes out that requires, you know, some redlining and you know some review processes, which AirSlate is great at. Um, you know, and then once you get through that process, there's the process of, you know, generating quotes or sales orders, um, you know, so along those lines, that's, that's where we find most of our, you know, air slate integration and work is in that, um, you know, that, that sales process essentially, you know, through mm-hmm. order. So what would you say is the breakdown between current air slate users who come to you to bring Salesforce into the mix versus current Salesforce users who come to you to bring AirSlate into the mix? Believe it or not, it's it's probably close to 50-50. You know, that's probably just because of our focus. Any other sort of high-level examples or summaries of, of how um, how AirSlate or SignNow users are working with you and what, what they're trying to do with, with Salesforce integrations? We have a customer that's in the legal, uh, legal space. Again, that just kind of comes back to, you know, significant amount of documents that have to go out for review approval signature um you know so it's it's not specifically sales but you know so another type of use case you know focuses around contracts contract negotiation uh contract approval and management you know which is great because you can you know with a click of a button send that out of salesforce pre-fill you know all the information that you've already captured um get it sent out let the negotiation and changes go back and forth, uh, accept, reject, whatever you need, get it all signed and then, you know, attach it in Salesforce and move that account, you know, or customer record or whatever the object is, move it to a different status, you know, move it to someone else in the organization, you know, so it's it's super powerful from that perspective. If you had a new customer who was uh, fairly new to, to AirSlate, but maybe had been using Salesforce for a while, what would be the first one or two uh, workflows that you can that you would recommend they automate with Salesforce using AirSlate? Uh, it, it would probably be either that initial, you know, if they have some kind of uh, initial contract or negotiation, uh, it would be that. Or you know, if if they're not ready to do that because there's too many people involved, you know, and they just want to focus on one thing primarily related with sales, it would be the uh, the quoting process. You know, where, where you can actually, uh, you know, assemble the quote because Salesforce out of the box is is kind of weak in that area as far as, you know, you can generate a PDF of a, of a quote and email it out, but it's not really super sophisticated. What, what's a common workflow that you automate? 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, again, goes back to that, you know, upfront sales process. Uh, typically when we, um, you know, pitch a customer and then, you know, they're, they basically decide to do business with, oh my, we get them to sign our master service agreement, you know, which has all our T's and C's and all the legal stuff in it. And, um, you know, we're, we're now able, it's like a three or four page document. It's not super complicated, but we're now able to send that out. You know, our, our sales team can send that out, um, basically just by clicking a button. They don't, have to do anything else you know as long as they've kept their account and contact record you know up to date along the way and followed a very basic process for data entry that we have for salesforce they basically click one button that master service agreement goes out there could be some you know sometimes it goes out with reviews sometimes we don't you know we don't send it out for sort of redlining but at the click of a button you know that goes out and the customer gets it same day, next day, they'll send it back again. We've sort of already done the dance to a certain extent. So they're ready to engage us. And then as soon as that happens um, and it's signed, the uh, salespeople can go in, you know, they've already got their opportunity set up inside Salesforce. And, you know, we use quotes in Salesforce, which are, you know, really our sales orders. So once that master service agreement is in place, you can generate sales orders you know right off an opportunity record in salesforce and again it's pretty much like a click of a button so if you know a customer is coming to us and they need 40 hours of um you know air slate implementation services and then maybe you know some kind of small maintenance package which we offer you know we don't just leave customers if they choose to stay with us which 95 percent of them do to um you know do some kind of maintenance after the fact Right. Um, the, the salesperson adds those two line items on the sales order um, or the quote essentially, clicks a button in Salesforce, goes out just for customer signature, comes back and, you know, we assign a team. Um, so it's it's basically we used to use two different systems to do our master service agreements and then, you know, kind of, you know, transfer opportunities and quotes to uh, to sales orders now we've been able to kind of consolidate that and you know it, it's almost as simple as the click of a button that so it great. saves sales teams a tremendous amount of time you know gets gets our customers uh, engaged a lot quicker allows us to sign you know assign resources a lot quicker and then um, you know go ahead and get started on the the customer's project and get them you know up and running on Sl air slate a lot quicker how do people find you usually how do they stumble across so am i um so we have a couple channel partners um mm -hmm. i i mentioned you know uh, app direct app smart you know mm -hmm. so basically through our through our channel network through you know online we do do some online advertising, you know, like, like everybody yep. does yep. Uh, yep. a lot of it's also, you know, word of mouth and in reference, which is great, you know, cause that just kind of confirms that we do, you know, we do a, a great job for our yeah. customers and they're happy and, you know, they recommend us and, and push us on. So let's, let's end with one piece of advice that you would give businesses of any size out there. If they haven't fully digitized or automated, what's the first thing they, why should they be doing that right now? If, if COVID didn't make them do it already, uh, why should they start digitizing now? Well, there's still a, a lot, um, you know, a lot of businesses that just for whatever reason, you know, COVID didn't help them, you know, optimize and automate. But, you know, as we, as we talked about, um, you can, save a tremendous amount of time not only you know internally for your organization but also for your customers you know the people that you're engaging with um you know because everybody's you know working differently nowadays uh so i would recommend you know starting small you know a lot of people try to bite off too much um start small don't try to boil, don't try to boil the ocean you know iterate on it um, continuous improvement is, you know, is great. And I mean, it's, it's not, it's not as hard as you think, especially if you start, um, you know, start small and bite it off in, in, you know, little bitty pieces. Um, you know, yeah. that's, that's some advice.